Speaker, this rule provides for consideration of H.R. 2647, the Resilient Federal Forests Act of 2015, a bill that is critically important to my district in central Washington state, which is unfortunately once again facing another devastating wildfire season. This bipartisan comprehensive legislation is aimed at expediting and improving forest management activities in federal forests. It builds upon many legislative concepts introduced in this and in previous Congresses to address disastrous consequences of catastrophic wildfire, insect and disease infestations, and other threats to our nation's forests. H.R. 2647 would return resilience to the overgrown, fire-prone forests that encompass a great deal of land in the western United States. It would dramatically improve the health and resiliency of our federal forests and rangelands by simplifying the environmental process requirements, curtailing project planning times, and reducing the cost of implementing forest management projects, all while still ensuring robust protection of the environment. Mr. Speaker, just last year in my district in central Washington, we endured the Carlton Complex fire, the largest wildfire in our state's history, which was responsible for the destruction of over 300 homes and businesses. This devastating wildfire crippled many parts of my district, and many of my constituents are still trying to recover. Yet it seems as soon as we start to move past one major wildfire, another is immediately on our doorstep, literally. Almost 10 days ago, new fires broke out in Washington State and in cities like Wenatchee and Quincy and counties including Benton and Chelan and Grant, Adams and Douglas, immediately spreading and some requiring Washington State fire mobilization resources to keep them from escalating. As the West continues to face severe drought conditions, the threat of wildfire will only continue to worsen. In order to to begin to prevent and address these fires, we need to reform the way we, pre we prepare for and respond to and fund wildfire response and mitigation efforts. We cannot continue to limp from one devastating fire season to the next, leaving little to no time and even less funding available for reforestation, re rehabilitation, and overall forest management. This bill addresses those shortcomings by providing new methods of funding, which will tackle the problem of fire borrowing. It also includes tools the Forest Service can implement immediately to treat thousands of acres of forest land at a lower cost. Earlier this year, the House Natural, Natural Resources Committee's Subcommittee on Federal Lands, of which I'm a member, held a hearing on this bill. One of the witnesses testifying was U.S. Forest Chief Service Chief Tom Tidwell. In his opening comments, Chief Tidwell remarked that the Forest Service is encouraged by many of the goals outlined within the bill and welcomes legislation that incentivizes collaboration and expands the tool set we can use to complete critical work on our nation's forests without overriding environmental laws. I believe these comments reflect the bipartisan nature in which this legislation was drafted and highlight the necessity of reforms we are considering here today. Mr. Speaker, it should be also be noted that because of the reforms and streamlined authorities in this bill, there will be an increase in acres of treated land, all at no additional cost to taxpayers. This legislation is essential and desperately needed to change the current path of forest management on public lands, which is outdated, unsustainable, and dangerous.